If you watched competitive Magic in the 2010s, you knew about Star City Games. Star City Games pioneered the idea of a tournament series and broadcast tournaments where the storyline of the Magic Grinder, a young traveling road tripping Magic player, was open in plain sight. It created and maintained the careers of many a Magic player. It created legends, some good, some not so good. There was nothing inherently revolutionary about the idea of a regional tournament series. We've had high stakes tournaments showcasing some of the best Magic talent in the world since the early 90s. But SCG mastered the art of refinement. It made you care about the players. There was a leaderboard to see who would be the SCG Player of the Year. And it was broadcast to the world via the power of live streaming and tournament production. Now, all of that is in the past. The pandemic happened. SCG moved into a different direction, and the rest is history. But what if I told you that the next Star City Games is in an Ohio village populated by less than 2,000 people? That this tournament organizer is the future of Magic coverage. First, let's understand the business of Apex Gaming. Meet the Huck Brothers. They started operations a few years ago, before the pandemic. I kind of handle the business end of everything and make the policies and procedures and how we operate, go over that with the team and get everybody's input. I do come from a business background. I own several other businesses, um, some restaurant, some regular just retail pharmacy, some other things like that. So I, I do come from a, a business management and accounting background. I handle uh, social media and streaming and things like that, like marketing. That's mostly what I do. Taryn tells me the story of what motivated them to start a magic store. I was in a store. I was trying to get a deck together before an event, and I just was looking for some uncommon. So I asked one of the workers. They were on the clock, presumably, but they were just sitting at a computer, like a work computer, playing a game. And I was like, hey, can I get this uncommon? And they were like, oh, it'd probably be in one of those binders. And then just turned around and kept working. Obviously, that's not good practice. It's not right. I was already kind of wanting to do a store at that point with Kyle. That's not how it should be. And I want to do things this way and do them the right way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Now, taking that story and applying it to the store itself, the Huck brothers tell me about appearances, namely how importantly they view the layout. Something that basically every player that walks into our store says is like, wow, this is nice. Like, I didn't know this was down here. We really felt that everything had to be nice. Upscale where you're going into nice floors, nice walls, you know, remodeled space, wood tables, nice restaurant style padded chairs. We just didn't want it to turn into like a club or something where just like a few guys hang out. We wanted it to be like really open and clean and children can feel safe there, parents can feel safe taking their kids there and everyone can have a good fun time in like a, a nice environment. There's tons of people that just like, oh, I play Magic. I, I played Commander around the kitchen table with my buddies for years now or whatever. And then they see your shop and they stop in and we've attracted a lot of new players. There's Magic everywhere. <laughs> This is the part where I tell you about Apex Gaming's highly unusual store practices. Apparently, they go out of their way to deliver an amazing customer experience. One of the number one rules we came up with is we're going to make an offer on every card that comes in. One of my pet peeves is going to a store and not being able to sell your cards. Um, it's kind of frustrating. I totally get it. I understand. I just think that it makes for a better community if stores are able to buy cards or at least make a reasonable offer. Okay, fine, so Apex will buy any card from you. But here's the fun part. They'll also sell any card to you, whether they have it in stock or not. When we don't have the cards, we order them from either from TCG Player, Star City Games, Card Kingdom, wherever we can get the cards for our customers so they don't have to pay shipping. So everybody puts their orders in, we go out and order all the cards and get them in for everybody. Basically, if you have store credit with us, and you want to buy some cards using your store credit, we'll just pull out the cards that we have, but then also just place an order to Card Kingdom or wherever we can get them cheapest, TCG Player or whatever, and then have your whole deck or order like ready for you to pick up. Think about it logically. You might as well make it a good experience for the customer because they're going to go buy the card wherever they're going to buy the card anyways, if you don't have it. 
So if you helped him out, why not? We're already ordering. We can already, you know, we can save him shipping, whatever. Make it easier for him. And yeah, so it just, I mean, it just kind of makes sense. Actually, when you think about it, let's help him out. This is quite unusual. Are you telling me that a magic store in the year 2024 is actually looking out for its customers? There's a trend here in terms of how Kyle and Taryn conduct themselves. But let's revisit this topic as we explore more of Apex Gaming. As far as attracting players, I think that that comes from our passion for running competitive tournaments. And that's what really brings the players to our area. Really good payouts and uh, treating the player base with as much respect as we can. I mean, we have players, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere and running really good tournaments, in my opinion, is what brings them <laughs> down, you know, to our shop. The Huck brothers talk a good talk and the Twitch coverage, I must admit, is excellent. But I wanted to make sure that all the stories lined up. So I reached out to some Apex Gaming regulars to see what's up. My name is Krista Oskopinski. I am a magic grinder from the East Coast. I played in DreamHack Dallas. I qualified for DreamHack Atlanta and I played in that as well. I'm Ryan Hayes. I played Pro Tour Ikoria. It was on Arena. I just played Pro Tour March of the Machines. I'm TJ Radizak. I qualified for a Pro Tour back during COVID. It was one of the, the first online Pro Tours, I think. I've grinded a lot of the SCGs, at least locally this year, um, that I've done pretty well at. So it's about four times I've been to Apex. Uh, and I've been playing a lot on Apex, doing doing reasonably well in that series. I've played a lot on like the Apex circuit. And most of our local players drive an hour to two plus, and a lot of them come six hours regularly playing our big tournaments. It's actually a little bit of a trek for me. I would say it's about like seven or eight hours to get there. But that's kind of the fun, is uh, these big events and traveling with your friends, all getting in a car, talking like game plans and strategy like on the way. Uh, so I think that's kind of the charm of it too. Every so often the, the bigger competitive kind of convention style weekends, like people really like to travel out to those and they'll get hotels and stay. Usually when I go, I'll go and I'll play like the entire weekend that's offered. They definitely make it worth your while to be there for the whole weekend. There's always things going on. It's pretty incredible. I think it's very difficult to go there for like just a day or something if you're in Ohio. They're based in an area where there's just like a lot of almost nature surrounding them. So if you're kind of going in for the trek, you need to kind of go in for like the full weekend, but they totally make it worth it. They have side events, they have re-CQs going on and everything. If you drop out of like their main event, they have stuff going on all weekend. So it's, it's great. It's kind of cool. Cause it's in like a smaller town. You walk in and it like, looks like it shouldn't be anything bigger than just like your very small local game store. And then they just, every time I've been in it just like expanded the place. Like every time I walk in, I feel like he's showing me a new project. I've never been to any kind of magic event that I felt more comfortable at than the Apex events. Something that Apex always had is, is hot food at like cheap prices, tastes good, they have clean restrooms, which I'm pretty picky about, so. And it's really cool, just like see it from the outside and like how it's kind of progressed. The past two times I've been there, they've just added addition after addition, like they added a bar, they added like six new restrooms, they are always trying to upgrade their coverage and everything. So it's just kind of incredible the lengths that they go to for their players. It feels very community driven. They are hearing what we have to say and what our needs are and they're trying their best to like meet those needs. We get to work with Wizards on the event side too. They're a great partner. They help sponsor our events, help make the Invitational Series possible. They really want us to be bringing competitive magic on the, the basic, the lower level, you know, the, the regional Press level roots. to life. And without us, they'd have a hard time with it. So they do want to show us support. I think the other thing that they like is our, our series really incorporates other local game stores. We have many, it wouldn't really be right to call them like satellite stores, but they'll host Apex Invitational Qualifiers, we call them AIQs. And they're just like two slot events that earn an invitation to our big Last season, it was a $20,000 invitational. Just, I think the fact that we incorporate and we work together with many other local game stores 
makes it kind of more attractive for them to work with us because then they kind of get to work with all of them too. Here, the players talk about the quality of play and smooth tournament organization being a major factor for them to come. Caldwell's a little smaller than most most tournaments you would go to. The events are, are very well run. They're, you know, not quite as big as something like an NRG or like an RC, but they have a, a bigger feel than just like a normal 1K, which is, which is a really great sweet spot. They really put the player's experience first. There was an invitational, a 20k invitational. Basically, you win one of their uh, Apex Invitational qualifiers, like they started the series, and you got to play in this 20k with 60-something people overall. And there was one slot for some reason, because a few people didn't show up because of they were sick or something. And there was only one slot that wasn't going to get cashed out. They were like one slot short and like, Kyle, the owner of Apex, was like, hey, we're going to pay out this last slot so like nobody feels bad about it. He really goes out of the way to make the player experience very good, and you feel good about your playing. There's really no feel-bads when you go and play these events. Everything that goes into the prize pool comes right back out. High-quality judging matters. Players want competitive scenes with solid rulings and enforcement. Their judges are great. The judging staff's always super great. Aaron Hammer is usually does it. It's been super great. We've had Garrison come down. Elliot Rath's been down here a few times. I love getting to talk to the judges between rounds, see how the stuff is going. The judging staff's great. Like, all the players are great. The people from, like, the surrounding community have been awesome. The influencer slash creator strategy. Kyle and Taryn are pretty savvy about this. Big names build legitimacy, and it's a part of their marketing and outreach strategy. They try to do a lot of creator involvement and very notable player involvement too. It's really cool just like every time we go now that like more and more new people or popular people like people from the magic community that like you would know from just like watching streams and stuff are starting to show up and give it kind of the recognition I think it deserves. Will Hall's been here from the UK. Young Dingo has been out here from California to multiple tournaments. Uh, my name is Mikey Bashara, also known as Young Dingo. I am a Magic streamer for the most part. I always love going to the Apex events. They've been a huge supporter. They treat me like family there. I got to play in their Lorcana Invitational, and they got some extremely notable names out there. People like Nathan Stoyer, people like Brian Koval, just amazing players at the game. There's like a real draw to come out. Remember what Krista said about making the weekends an event? Apex Gaming offers that in spades. We have command zone passes for when we do our like convention style weekends. People can buy into the command zone and they earn tickets and can go and get something from the prize wall. It's a fun weekend for those more casual players too to participate in. I've got one of the big cards from Apex and everything too. Things are very like reasonably priced and things are obtainable there. They're not trying to shark you on anything. He runs his prize wall with tickets and stuff and if people are just short on tickets, he's like, don't worry about it. Like, I got you. That's on me. Here's some tickets. Go get what you want to get. I just always feel good there, like I'm getting my money's worth. It's a nice feeling as a player to have, feel like almost other players are looking out for you. Apex feels a lot more like a mom and pop shop that just wants to like take care of you and make sure you have a good experience. And I think that's really the difference. I have never been to a better paper tournament. But it's one thing to run a decent magic business or host regional tournaments with solid prize pools. It's quite another to get the word out on a global level. These days, someone like me living all the way out in China can watch high-level paper magic streamed in Caldwell, Ohio. Here, Kyle and Taryn break down the ingredients of good magic coverage. Largely, it's gameplay. The thing that viewers care about the most is just watching good gameplay, which sometimes can be out of your control. When we have these the big weekend tournaments, we have some really good competitors. So we just make a point to get our like our talented players on stream and you know players who are doing well in the tournament and then i would say commentators is the other thing and i think that's something that we didn't understand when we started but commentary really good commentary is really hard to do i, I mean it's it's a talent we have basically sort of contracted that out to todd anderson and ross merriam i mean their commentary is top notch they do a tremendous job todd anderson and ross merriam big names bring legitimacy to events 
I'm Ty Anderson. I play Magic the Gathering for a living. I'm a streamer. I've been playing professionally for almost 20 years now. I have uh, a lot of wins on the SCG Tour. I have four Grand Prix top eights, uh, two invitational wins, and in, in two different tournament series. And, and yeah, that's me. I'm Tandy. I'm Ross Miriam. I'm a longtime Magic player. I you know, played on the SCG Tour for many years. Have 25 or 30 so top eights uh, on that tour. I've played probably you know a dozen pro tours in my time as well. So Ross and I have been doing uh, commentary for Apex's uh, Invitational Series for about two years now. 2022, I just like randomly stumbled on one of their live streams. The co-owners were, were playing on camera and they were just like fielding questions from chat and i was just like hey where are, where are y'all located I'm like okay what's up with, with your store and your stream they gave me a whole spiel and i was like cool do y'all want like real people doing commentary when things started opening back up there weren't that many tournaments but most of the commentary gigs either disappeared or became online only and i i wanted to like go back to the meeting people hanging out in the store talking to the people that are like actually playing in the events and Apex was very open to bringing Ross and myself on board to do this. I was blown away the first time Todd and I went up there for that season one invitational. I was expecting a typical local gaming store and we would get kind of pushed into a corner with like a laptop screen in front of us. And instead they have a fully soundproofed booth in the back of the store. So we, you know, we don't have to deal with noise. We have this huge flat screen TV in, in the booth that projects the matches for us so we can see everything very clearly. And then off to the side is the sort of director chair and all the computer that they use. So it was a much more high quality setup that, than I was expecting. When you bring folks like Todd and Ross on board, you also leverage their networks. I've been working a little more behind the scenes, bringing in sponsors, you know, helping to promote the events on uh, social media and stuff. I was lucky enough to accumulate quite a few followers in the 2010s, and now I'm like trying to leverage them to help people and that I like and businesses that I like. They obviously put in a ton of work, put making their series thrive, and they have the resources and the gumption to put on the production. And all I did was advertise for them because that's really all they need. All they need is someone to just yell, hey, come here and play Magic, it's awesome. And that's what I do. Constantly improving. That's how Kyle and Taryn view the whole operation. And here, they're pretty open about being open to feedback. They're really open to new ideas. It, it's very clear from working with them that they care about putting a great product out for their players, for viewers on the stream. Not only have they done commentary for us, but they give us pointers and they've really talked to us about that side of Magic, having previously worked in it and been in high level tournaments. They've, they've really helped us and given us a lot of pointers. They're willing to invest in something that may not have immediate returns, maybe something that, that requires long-term building. So they're very uh, future focused and, and forward thinking. And that is something I really appreciate. Kyle's a businessman. He's very smart when it comes to actually planning out a lot of what's going on in the future. He's an open book. He explains why he does everything all the time. And I think that's very admirable also that he's so open and upfront with everybody that he works with. And yeah, working with them has been a dream. Uh, they're extremely professional, they're passionate, and they hired Ross and I to come do stuff. So we like them because of that too. There's also the technical aspects of the stream production. This is where Taryn geeks out about the details. And yes, the details do matter. You know, the overlay, your production value in general, having like smooth transitions. So we, we have something called a stinger transition where it kind of wipes away and the Apex logo floats in and things like that. You don't want it to be like distracting and in the way of watching the game or anything, but you definitely, you want a little bit of smoothness fading in between scenes, switching to player cams, things like that. The next part is super important. It's what large scale tournament productions do well, the storyline. Give the audience and players a reason to care. Basically, what are the stakes? It's something that we kind of started working on in our last couple seasons and Todd and Ross have been working on that with us. They kind of do a good job with their commentary of just bringing it to the front of what the players are playing for, what they've done in previous tournaments, 
where they've faced off before, who won last time. I, they just do a tremendous job of just kind of like off the dome knowledge, even if we don't have a bunch of like statistics available or things like that. Doing like player cards, we kind of pop up a card of like some of our more prominent players on our series and, you know, some of their accolades and things like that. To craft like a narrative like that, that definitely does a lot to engage your viewers. Just retain viewership, but make just a higher quality product in general. The only thing I've heard about Apex that people really want is they would like it to be a traveling series. Right now, it's basically, it's a home store, but it's spider webs. I will say the one downside of the Apex event is the location. There's nothing in Caldwell, Ohio. Like I had talked to them about, hey, like what about just running out the convention center in Columbus? Because like when you had like the SCGs and stuff, it was like, oh, I know what the SCG tour is. Okay, where are they going to be? I would love to see them go to like a convention center and do something like that. I think that'd be great. I do think that he could advertise his events a little bit better and that he could consider expanding or maybe getting like a, a moving tour like SCG used to do because I really truly think if they had the resources, Kyle's got the will to be the next Star City Games. Yeah, I think at, at a certain point, Apex will have to put on events outside of Caldwell. I don't know when they will reach that point, but I expect that to be something that gets explored relatively soon. This is definitely a challenging topic because it's the classic expansion problem. How do you maintain the bottom line and grow at the right levels? Let's say you rent out convention centers and people don't show, then it's a huge financial blow. But as a business, are you leaving money on the table if you stay local in a village, again, of less than 2,000 people? What Apex Gaming has shown is that players are willing to make it out to their tournaments. But is there an opportunity to get larger? This is something that only Kyle and Taryn will be able to answer with time. I also asked Todd to compare and contrast Apex with some of the other regional players, like Nerd Rage Gaming, aka NRG, out of Chicago, Illinois. I think NRG coverage is stellar. It's extremely professional, very well put on, and everyone who plays those tournaments really enjoys it. For me, it's it's a regional thing. Like he's kind of up in the Midwest area of Chicago. That's just like too far for the majority of me and my my folks in this whole area to get to because of that i think that there's just like a huge magic audience that was the scg tour the eastern seaboard basically just can't play these events but it's a wonderful production both of these do remote commentary and when i go to apex i get to sit in a booth it's different for the players too man i walk around and i talk to all of them and i ask them how they're doing and i critique their decks and I talk to them about their plays and, and you don't get that when you're pure digital and, and you lose that part of the community and that's something that I really wanted to stress. We're, we're doing great right now. Uh, I'm very excited about season four. Yeah, it's really interesting, right? Because NRG is kind of off in a different part of the country and there is some overlap. You know, Ryan Hayes is one of the players that competes in all the Apex events and actually made it to the NRG Invitational at the end of the year. It's a fair comparison to compare Apex to NRG five years ago. NRG five years ago was doing a lot of the similar stuff Apex was. They were running events out of their home store and maybe venturing a little bit around that area, but they weren't really leaving the home store. While it's not fair to compare them because different areas and stuff like that, I think Apex is doing a great job of competing in that area and I'm excited to see them grow and expand and do more awesome things going forward. Going back to the storyline part, is there an opportunity to make this stronger? I'd love to see us get back to a point, like leaderboard, something along those lines is, is something I would really like to see. That was kind of my, my drive towards the NRG series this year, was they had the, the points leaderboard, and they had a really small invitational, which I enjoyed. It really felt like it meant something to get to that one, and I think those just like small, very elite invitationals are something that a lot of higher level Magic players strive for. When you can build that storyline for the players, that's good for the players, that's good for the store, and great for people to watch. I asked Ryan to explain why he thinks Apex removed the leaderboard. I'm not super sure. I think they had a lot of events that season. They had a lot of invites, so the leaderboard kind of didn't fulfill all of their needs. You didn't have to like grind to get on the leaderboard too much as just like spike an event or two would put you onto the leaderboard or you could grind to usually get on it. So like they awarded buys to the top eight. So like that was very competitive, but the the lower half of the, the leaderboard didn't feel like it mattered enough, I think. The answer is nuance and speaks to the nature of competitive magic today. 
balancing player needs and setting up players for the regular grind versus spiking events. Is Apex Gaming on a trajectory to become the next Star City Games? I thought it would make sense to ask someone whose magic career was directly benefited by SCG exposure. We're starting from a smaller base than a entity like Star City Games was. And most people who got into watching SCG, especially during its golden era with like Cedric and Patrick at Doom Commentary and then the people that followed them, that SCG Live sort of took years to develop and mold into the product that it became. And if you watch some of the early broadcasts, they're pretty rough in comparison. So I would say we have reached that height, that apex of SCG to, for lack of a better term but we're certainly on our way and uh, I have all the confidence that we're going to get there. It's not at that level now, but it is quickly approaching that level and, and it's it keeps on improving. So maybe in a couple of years, we'll get to that level, we'll see. It's made leaps and bounds since we started working with them a year and a half ago. Star City Games' level of competition grew over time and created an entire generation of magic grinders. It certainly sounds like Apex is starting to cultivate a similar trend. We keep getting more high quality players and the players themselves are improving because they're off playing other events. Travis Brown, who just crushed uh, an SCG last fall as a regular at Apex events. The Abadis are regulars at SCGs and NRGs and they do well. Ryan Hayes has qualified for several Pro Tours. He's a regular at Apex. TJ Radizak. We're starting to see the stars of the Apex series emerge and they're making a name for themselves at other tournaments as well. At this point, I stop beating the bush. I asked Ross straight up if there are parallels between SCG and Apex in terms of creating exposure to a brand new generation of Magic players. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't make direct comparisons between players, but we are seeing emerging stars the way SCG created emerging stars. You know, I was one of them. I made my name on the SCG tour, eventually reached the point where I am now because of it. So all the people that I just mentioned, those are all players that I can see being major figures in Magic in the coming years, especially Ryan and TJ. Those guys put in a lot of work. Their quality of play is, is quite high. All right, here's the twist. Are you watching closely? This story is about Apex Gaming, but it's also about more than Apex Gaming. Competitive magic at the grassroots level is very important. It's taken a hit over the years for many reasons, and honestly, it's beyond the scope of this video to go through them all. What I will say is that the presence of regional players like Apex Gaming or Nerd Rage Gaming is critical for the preservation of competitive magic. It gives people something to care about and to grow alongside it. What I do know is that Apex is showing us that yes, there is a way. You can create a solid magic business with a strong customer experience. You can incentivize competitive minded players to show up. And you can promote your operation to someone like me living halfway around the world in Shanghai, China. Last but not least, you can be open to community feedback and work on ways to get better, to expand, to constantly improve. What Kyle and Taryn have done is take their community-minded business approach and apply it to the space of Magic the Gathering. They're not the first, and they certainly won't be the last. I encourage you to think about how to make competitive Magic a success in your community. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please tell a friend. And if you're interested in directly supporting Humans of Magic so that I can continue making stories like this, please consider contributing to my Patreon. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.